into our online form. The link is also on the screen right now. Upcoming, we have a speech by Associate Professor Harusheng on managing uncertainties from the perspective of a non-profit organization. Professor He Risheng is the director of the Humanity Development Department of Ziji Foundation and also associate professor of the Institute of Religion and Hum Humanity of Ziji University. Professor, please. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Chairman Zhang and all the distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen, thank you for giving time to share in the idea of managing uncertainty from the perspective of non-profit organization of Tsuji Foundation. Uh, in this morning, we have heard a lot of um, idea of the uncertainty, disruption, and also we believe that Buddha told us the four noble truths, that the doctrine of suffering, that everyone had known and, and might experience the suffering. The suffering caused by our greed, obsessional ideal, and, and the phenomenon of impermanence. It means our greed and obsession ideal and expectation of forever life it's just an illusion because nothing lasts forever. In doctrinal accumulation, we systematically develop and scale and occupy all this suffering. Our assessments of secular matter will be accumulated and that we systematically establish our world we live. And this is the root of suffering that we cope with every day. And regarding doctrine of extinction, we undergo change. Each desire to avoid the suffering. And as Buddha told us that we had to ease the desire, reduce our greed, and reduce temptation. For the doctrinal path, that Buddha told us the evidence of enlightenment by moral practice in daily life. And we will be able to reach the statement of enlightenment, and that is the fundamental teaching of Buddha. It just Professor Deng bring us to meditate. It really bring us breeze. But we cannot feel calmness in meditation. But feel nervous in our daily life. We have to apply those doctrines to our daily life. So in seeking and it's talking about suffering. Suffering is not an opposite of happiness. From Buddha teaching, suffering is that nothing permanent. Suffering means impermanence. So people say, I'm happy. I got a rich life. I have a good wife, a good kid, and I'm so fortunate and very successful. Why are you bring the suffering to me? I don't need the teaching of suffering. So, but suffering is not an opposite of happiness. Even your happiness, you were your world being in your family, but nothing lasts forever. That's Buddha's wisdom to tell us that nothing lasts forever. Even happiness, even world being will be extinction some days. So you have to learn to cope with the impermanence. Like this we can see in 2003, this is a bomb in Iran is an ancient city less than 3,000 years. But only less than one minute it collect like this. Less than one minute the earthquake hit the ancient city and destroyed everything and caused 80,000 people die. So that's why I mentioned the Buddha's teaching that nothing lasts forever. Everything is impermanent. For Buddha's concept, we know that Buddha grew up in a very, you know, wealthy and noble life. He's living in the palace of kingdom. And his father prevented him to become a monk. So uh, he prepared his residence 
in warm temperature in winter and cool weather in summer. But one day when Buddha saw an old man dying on the street, he realized that our body, our youth, and our happiness will not last forever. So Buddha told us that our second world is impermanent, and yet we have to engage in the second world, but not be occupied by it. It's very important to share with you and, 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 and be aware that Buddha did not told us to away from the second world. We were engaged, but not occupied by it. That's mean in Chinese, zhong dao. So we don't and we can have to abandon the second world. Instead, we had to find our eternity in the second world. The eternity is love. Love and compassion keep our spirit and keep the world continuous. This was Chi's doctor uh, who provided the free training in Iran after the earthquake. And we can see the children study in the outdoor at the um, earthquake without shelters. So we build a school for them after the earthquake. So suffering and transcendent, where there is a suffering, there should be love. And transcendent our desire to great love. So my point is that we don't eliminate our desire. We transcendent our desire to a greater love to embrace all sensual beings instead of eliminate our desire or sentiment. This is a, a oh yeah, it's a little bit behind. This is Japan earthquake tsunami back to 2010. And this, the volunteers um, went to see the disaster site and try to help. And in Hualien, the headquarters of Tsuji would prepare the um, uh, instant rice that could um, uh, you know, provide the hot meal in the disastrous area. So we can see the volunteer cook in the uh, 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 Japan and after the uh, earthquake to provide the hot meal for the earthquake survivors. The menu uh, including the curry rice and miso soup. Hot meal is a real matter for the victims. It's cold in the winter. They're terrified. They lost their parents, they lost their children. So hot meal will warm their stomach, also warm their heart. So a bowl of hot curry with the rice warm the heart and stomach of a person. You can see the people in Japan, they orderly, you know, lined up for the food especially prepared for them. So once we see the suffering, we see the accumulation of suffering is to create the secular, order, secular world. Now we're talking about accumulation of love to relieve the pain of suffering one. And bring the extinction of suffering. So as I just say, the suffering cre you know, created by our desire. But desire is not evil thing. Sentiment is not evil thing. We have to transcend, transform your desire to great love. So accumulation of suffering become accumulation of love to relieve the suffering one. This is a, we prepare the blanket for the Japanese victim after the earthquake. You can see we went to the camp and provide a blanket for AV senior uh, people. And our uh, volunteers wrap in a blanket around the elderly uh, lady, and the volunteer comfort her gently to ease her tense and worries. We hug them like a family member. Our volunteers say, sorry we're late. We should come earlier. You know, although they arrive you know, three days later, they say, sorry, we are late. And really touch the people in the Japan. You know, Japan is just pretty shy. They, they don't really, you know, like, uh, you know, passionate as American as uh, some other people, but uh, 
they, they, but they, they are crying after we read the, the letter of uh, Dharma Master Zheng Yan, after we hug them one by one. You can see the senior woman, the, the, when she heard the letter of Master Zheng Yan, she was crying. So this kind of great love, accumulation of great love, bring the extinction of suffering for those who undergo the disaster or any catastrophe that nature or human made. Through that kind of extinction, we reach the path of enlightenment. And that kind of enlightenment is through collaborative compassion, not individual compassion, but collaborative compassion. We employ our love to ease the accumulation of suffering and create the well-being to others. And also, by helping others, we reach the state of ultimate enlightenment. That's the fundamental philosophy of Siji. So therefore, when we mention the suffering, we are not going to overemphasize the, neg the neg negative part of the desire or sentiment. Desire is not, as I mentioned, not absolute wrong or evil. Instead, we have to transfer our desire to a bigger love. To love all sensual men, to be Buddhist, does not mean desensitized to other uh, beings. On the contrary, we expand our sentiment to all being, and by this we transfer our desire to a state of bigger life. So elimination of desire is one way of Buddhist practice, but we believe that elimination will cause a lot of distortion of human spirit. We've been taught, you know, suppress your desire. Just Professor Deng told us, don't suppress your idea that come out in the meditation. Avoid it, change it, and ease it. So, so is our desire and sentiment. You don't suppress your desire. You suppress one, one side, it'll come out the other side, even stronger. You try to eliminate your sentiment. Yes, in part, but the sentiment come out even stronger than before. Don't do that. Transcend it. Transform it. That's Master Zheng's teaching. Transform your sentiment and de desire to love all sensual beings, to provide greater love to the others. So as the Dharma Master Hui Neng Da Shi has told, the universal is emptiness, so that you can accommodate everything in the cosmos. So is our mind. You see, the house is empty. So we live here, right? We can gather here. A cup is empty, so it can contain water. My suit, I just bought it in Singapore. So I forget to remove the tap. Thank you, Richard, for reminding me that, <laughs> to prevent me the embarrassment right here. <laughs> I just bought it. This is, this is good. And uh, yeah, but the inside the cloth, the suit, is empty. So I can wear it. So empty is not nothing. It's everything you embrace, everything that you want to accommodate. Like the universe, accommodate everything and so is human mind. So our mind is the one with the universe. That's the Master Zheng Yan taught us as well as Buddha's teaching. So in regard to love all sensual being, the sensual being not only human being, all material convey lives. So the Chichi volunteers, recycling volunteers, they pick up the practice bottle, they feel there's life, exist in the bottle. They recycle the newspaper. They say there is some life exist in the newspaper, although it's been abandoned by you, it's been obsolete by you. So by doing that kind of recycling, we learn to embrace all essential beings, to cherish all beings, and respect all beings. So to the recycling, started in 1990, has been over 200,000 recycling volunteers worldwide and uh, accommodate 8,000 recycling stations 
in 17 countries and regions so far. You can see all the people lined up to do the recycling and sorting. And we have a lot of uh, uh, temporary uh, recycling station in the city of Taiwan. You can see even in the ocean, people doing the recycling because there are garbages in the ocean. And they went out and, you know, with the boat to carry those garbages that had been floating in the ocean. Even the people that cannot see the blinding one become the uh, recycling leader in the city of Tainan. And the entrepreneur doing that, and the senior, over 100 years old, the senior volunteers work for the recycling for 20 years. And this is a lady uh, used to have a backbone bang over 120 degree after half years recycling work. He can, she can stand up like this. It's a true story. I met her many, many times in Taipei City. So even the drug user, like these gentlemen, they all drug users and were in jail for many years. When they go out of jail, they join the recycling station. They undergo that kind of therapy and they transform their obsession on drug to obsession on recycling. <laughs> obsession is a human being, as C. G. Jung told us. Everyone obsesses something. Instead of obsess something on bad, obsess something on good. But eventually, you reach, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. Thank you, thank you for reminding me. Yeah, this is a lineup, the volunteers, and um, the temporary uh, uh, recycling station, and even in the ocean, we're doing the recycling. And this is, a, I respect, um, the very respectful uh, senior volunteers. She cannot see, but she do the recycling. You know, everyone feel their uh, value of life do the recycling. Entrepreneur join that, and this senior lady over 100 years doing the recycling for 20 years, and she passed away three years ago at the age of 104. And this is a senior lady over 80s, and she used to have a backbone over 120 degree. Now she can stand up after working for the recycling station for half a year. And this drug user were in jail for many years. When they came out, they joined the recycling station. As I told that they obsessed in drug, now they are very happy in recycling, okay. So we also created this cycle of love because those plastic bottles can produce blanket, can produce clothing that can provide to different people. The blanket is produced at plastic bottle. Seven plastic bottles can produce a blanket like this and provide by our dye TV, tech, dye technology company. It's a social entrepreneurs and different clothing and more than 100 products that produced by plastic bottles. So even the bottle can be used, so is your body. So this is a, a, a folding bed. It also, uh, we designed it and easy to, uh, to fold, easy to carry. Yeah. And go to next. So uh, let me mention the, the suffering is the body in our mind. Now I'm talking about the suffering. Suffering is our body, it's not our mind. And this morning, I think the doctor, uh, Dr. Ling, uh, or the other uh, expertise mentioned that uh, when you feel painful, you got illness, but your mind still can keep health. Like a master in Sun, he lived until 101 years old. In his lifetime, he took a lot of medicine. He had different clock. And when the clock ring, he eat this medicine. The second clock ring, he take another medicine. He, he was a perfect patient. Even he was so vulnerable, but he has a long life. So you don't do to be really that healthy to have a long life. Well, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, <laughs> according to Master's Insan, yeah. Uh, yeah, 
because the, we had to match these two computers. Yeah. So let me mention that uh, uh, this one. Yeah. At the final day, at the final years of Master Yin Sun, he lived in the Suji Hospital in Huanglian. So uh, the medical team took care of him comprehensively. Very good caring on the medical team. But every time when he woke up, he smiled. Even his physical condition is so vulnerable. But every time he, he woke up, he smiled. Every time doctor say, hey, uh, master, we go to check out the body, he complied. So he always keep his mind in peace, in calmness, although his physical condition was so bad because he was facing dying. But he never changed his mind or calmness, or peace, of ease. So Master Zheng Yan shared with us, just like Master Yin Sun, our mind cannot be occupied by the physical world. Our mind can transcendence of physical condition. Even we got sick, our mind still can keep healthy. This is strong implication between body and mind, that mind control body, not the other way around. Body follow your mind. So our health determined by a healthy mind and compassion and wisdom. When our body deteriorate someday, our wisdom mind, mind lasts forever. If you put this, you were, you were sure that one day, like a doctor told us, you know, we will all die someday. But the wisdom mind will last forever. Although we might re re reincarnate, reincarnation, you know, for several, you know, maybe thousand or, you know, the Buddha say, you know, maybe more than that. But keep practicing your wisdom mind, you might eventually reach the nirvana, the reach that can, can overcome your reincarnation. But how can we find eternity of spirit in the sacred world? That's what I want to share with you. This is Master Zheng Yan uh, with the Master Yin Sun. She was uh, his disciple. Master Yin Sun lived in uh, Hualien for more than 15 years to accept our care, especially Medicare. Uh, different pictures show. Eternity of spirit, that's one thing I want to share. We say the concept and the, the nature. For, for instance, if I give you a wrong cup. The wrong cup combine a concept or circle and portray material that produce a wrong cup, right? It's not a square cup. It's a wrong cup. You do have the, 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 the idea of a circle, of a wrong idea, so that would produce a wrong cup. But when the cup broken, the, the concept of the circle still exist or not? Of course, the, the ideal of a circle will not be ruined by the broken cup. So is our mind. Our mind is uh, more eternal than our physical condition. So just, just the mention that eternity and impermanence, the wrong cup is impermanent. But the ideal of circle last longer, right? You can find the circle on the cup, on the earth, on the coin, on everything you can see. So the, the, the true nature, according to Buddha teaching, is invisible, is shapeless. But people, human beings, too much obsessed by the shape, by the something concrete that we can hold, but that's impermanent. And, and eternity is invisible, it's shapeless. So we have to practice our mind attached to and close to the eternity, close to the invisible wisdom, invisible life. So if a cup cannot be ruined 
by the broken, the, the circle cannot be ruined by the broken cup. So as our wisdom mind can last longer than our physical existence. So, the, let me mention uh, some case in Siji. We know that eternity, according to Confucianism, is mean that you contribute to the second world. I believe that uh, for Confucianism, it does not emphasize on the eternity of non-second world. As uh, Confucius say, which is an interest. If it does not know life, how can you realize the death? Don't talk too much on after death. Talk about how can you do for your secular life. That's the Confucianism meaning of eternity. And there's also eternity of Buddhism. That's being that you have several lives. You keep practicing through different lives. Eventually reach the ultimate enlightenment, reach the, the, the state of nirvana. So, let me mention the story. Master Zheng said the Buddha nature is united with the truth of the universe. Buddha nature is united with the truth, all truth of the universe. So we say the Buddha is the awakening one, ultimate awakening one. He knows all the truth of the universe, and even united with the truth. So as long as your mind follows the truth, you carry the Buddha spirit. And every one of us has the Buddha nature. So your, your, your mind is not narrowed by an individual, by a body, like your Ray, your Richard, your Professor Deng, your Chairman Zhuang. That's only secular things. Your mind is bigger than that. Your Buddha nature is bigger than that and lasts forever. So let me introduce the, the sentimental program of Chi. That's the uh, uh, ultimate altruistic devotion uh, for the sentimental. They are donor, body donor. When they pass away, they donate their body to the medical student to have a, in a, you know, a sur surgical dissection, uh, simulation, surgical dissection. And um, this is uh, uh, one, one thing of the uh, sentimental when the professor teach the medical student. This is a, a, a one uh, a donor. Uh, before he passed away, he talked to the medical student. He told them that someday you're going to dissect my body. Remember, when you and I put on my body, that's the honorable moment I had in my life. You can make one wrong cut, 10 wrong cut, or even a thousand wrong cut on my body. But don't even take one mistake on patient in due course. That's the altruistic devotion, that's a sacrifice. So you can, you can imagine that when the sentimental told the student that kind of uh, wish, like kind of devotion. So Sunday student really put knife on the body. How touch they will be. How respectful they will be to treat the sentimental. That's the really devotion, devoted the soul, devoted the spirit. So in order to bring the student to learn the sentimental, they have to visit their family to, know, to learn the story of the donor. And then they have to bow to the sentimental before they do the dissection. And then they carefully to examine and operate surgery on the sentimental. After their body capices, they have to sew inch to inch to make the body incomplete. That show respect. In some country, the body just threw away. I have a friend from uh, University of John Hopkins, Professor Solomon. He is the expertise in NGO management. He watched the sentimental program with me in Chiji, and he told me that his father donated his body 
just last year, but the body eventually vanished. So he was stunned that in Suji, we sew uh, the body inch to inch and made the body incomplete. That have to bring students to learn that this is still a human being. This is still a Holy Spirit. So they, uh, after the class, student carefully dress the teacher respectfully and they put the letter into the coffin and organize the concert to feel well to the sentimental with the donors of family, all together become a big family. We organize the funeral and all the Dharma masters and the president of the university all showing their gratitude to the sentimental. And before the cremation, the student you know, went to the uh, uh, cremation site to clean up the cremation, ensure that the uh, last journey of the Santa Manta in a very good environment. And they put part of the ashes into the Tsuji University. That's the very divine one, the so-called the great giving hall in Tsuji University. This is a one of the Santa Manta. He was an entrepreneur. He donated billions of dollars to Tsuji and devoted to different activities in, in China in many, many countries. And this is a senior uh, volunteer over 90 years old. He passed, she passed away and she's also a volunteer. So in their lifetime, they donate their life and the effort and love to the victims, to the people. As they pass away, they donate their body to the medical student to learn how to treat patient properly. So according to Confucianism, that's the secular eternity because even that they pass away, their love continues. They are there alive in medical student spirit and real life in the patient's body. So that's secular eternity. And also, we took about the wisdom mind of Buddha, that the Buddha nature still exists and uh, practices on those sentimental. I think from age to age, from generation to generation, from life to life, they purify their mind. Like Alaye, they purify their, 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 the storage of seeds. All the seeds in storage purify step by step, life to life. So the wisdom life will last forever. So how can we distinguish impermanence and eternity? It's have to put our mind in action, not away from action, away from the second world. So you have to experience suffering, experience impermanence, so you know impermanence. When you talk to someone that does not know a Buddha teaching, you say, hey, life is impermanent. Life is suffering. They don't believe in you. I live in a good and worthy life. But when you bring them to see the catastrophe, they say, whoa, life is really impermanent. All the beautiful thing has gone all of a sudden. So people learn from suffering. Suffering is our teacher. The tree suffering as your mentor, just Master Zheng Lian said. And we have the gratitude to help those who suffered. That's them taught us the meaning of life. So when we, you can see when we went to the rural area in China, the farmer's hand is like a skin or tree. It's a very rock. And we went to see all the uh, different senior people, try to comfort them. Let's learn suffering from them. And wash their feet. This is new, uh, after Katrina, we embraced those victims in South Africa, in Sri Lanka. This is picture is taken by my uh, colleague, Suji colleague. I was there in Gansu. Can you tell me uh, the, the, how, how old is the, uh, the hand, the clean one and the dirty one? <coughs> how many ages difference? This is an a age of 56. This is an age of six young boy. 
In Gansu, only they only wash body twice alive, born and death. I saw the beautiful, you know, middle age, middle age wife over thirty five. She never get chance to take shower because water is so inadequate in Gansu. Let me show you this. Oh, why is in the pool? Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe I show that later. <laughs> okay, I show that later in Gansu. Um, this is a. I was there in the uh, Nepal, 2015, all collapsed on the temple and beautiful building. You can see how painful the kid. There's no any painkiller to do the surgery. So you can see the head and after shock, oh, you go too fast, too fast. Yeah. yeah. And um, on May 10, uh, we, we, went, we, we was there three days after the earthquake. And we, um, uh, after 10 days, we start to distribution blanket and rice and etc to over 20,000 people in Nepal, in Kathmandu. In May 12, another big earthquake hit the Kathmandu. So the, you can see the uh, a lady, uh, after the shock, he prayed for ground. This is not, this is a traditional ritual to try to ease the land, to ease the earth, try to calm down the motherland. Yeah. Don't shake anymore. And our volunteer accompany with them. And we organized a, a, a Buddha Day showering ceremony in Buddha's homeland. We provide them the a folding bed because uh, after earthquake, there's a monsoon. It's a heavy rain season. And we also have a different activity for young children too. And we also build the temporary house for them and classroom. This is also a tsunami uh, in Indonesia. The picture was taken horribly. We do the free clinic in both Indonesia and Sri Lanka. And that's all our volunteer learn from suffering. Prepare the rice for them. And uh, before we distribute our food, we bow for them. We say gratitude to them. And we build 4,000 houses in Bada Aceh. You can see the houses built. We also build a mo mosque, four mosques for Muslim. We build church in Philippines for Catholic, build a mosque for the Muslim Indonesia and be a church for Protestant in Taiwan. Our love is uh, regardless of your religion, regardless of your region, culture, and nationality. This is a, a school we built for Sri Lanka survivals. So accumulation of suffering had to be eliminated and changed by accumulation of love. This is a Flooding in 1991 in China. We went there to see the survivors. It's very difficult at the very beginning to support the relief in mainland China. They have a lot of skeptical on Taiwanese, especially our, our uniform is uh, red and uh, blue and white, like a Kuomintang. Kuomintang. <laughs> the logo Kuomintang is blue and white. So this is a spy es espionage from the Kuomintang. They try to conquer people's mind. <laughs> so we say three no, no politics, no propaganda, no intention to spread the Buddhist relief, belief, no religion, so to speak, no propaganda, no politics, no religion. Only focus to relieve the suffering people. So eventually they accept us. Now it's been 20, 24, 26 years, we're the only one 
that got registered in China as a as an overseas NGO. Only one and first one so far. Yeah. Maybe quick, just give the photos. Maybe go to yeah in Qinghai. It's a it's a five thousand kilometers, five thousand meters high, in in Qinghai. We have provided relief in China over twenty nine provinces and regions, and build a house for them too. This is one I want to mention the Gansu. I was there for a couple of time to build the water collector for the villagers. You know, there's no any tree, no grass in the mountain area. It's a large scale of area. So your family, you have the one member of family to carry water every day. They have to walk six hours back and forth to carry one small tank of water. And the water like this, very dirty. That's the water they carry. They have to, they have no choice. They have to, you know, back. They cook food, wash clothes, no shower, but the water like this, very contaminated. So we build the water collector. I, I saw a senior woman over 70 years. In the last 50 years, she carried water every day. And when his uh, son get married, the, sister, the, the, the doctor-in-law continued her mission to carry water every day, six hours back and forth in mountain area. So we, we give them the, uh, the water collector like this, and also build the new house. Because some area is too dry, there's no any raining at all. So even you provide them water collector, it's useless. So we re relocate them. Relocate them to the better area that close to Yellow River, so that they can uh, better feel and also better house like this. So they are happy now. We have a beautiful hundred houses so far. It's like a model of the um, Gansu province. This is a Philippine in Haiyan Typhoon back to 2013. You can see the boat of up, up shore to the land. Let me quick to, to see some scenery of the situation. The Tagaloban and Omog were devastating after the Haiyan typhoon. They're going to abandon the whole city, but Suji volunteers mobilized local people to clean up the city with their bare hand, like this. Every day, 15,000 people gather together. We cash for relief. We bring them the cash, 500 per day, peso. It's twice of their daily wages. The UN say you give them too much, we say, this is not wage, this is not salary, this is for relief. Even if they don't work, we still give them the, 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 the relief, cash. So we, we told them, we don't monitor your work. You do by yourself. So 10 people become a team. There's one leader to organize the work, you know, to clean up the city. Yeah. They clean up the city by their bare hand. Within 19 days, we clean up the whole Tagaloban. Another three days. We mobilize 300,000 people to clean up the Tagaloban. So the UN shock. They are dealing with the San Jose city. It has been three weeks, but let's change. So they invite us to clean up the city. Three days, we clean up another city in San Jose. You can see even the uh, the, see the ladies and children join that. We say, use your hand to rebuild your own city. You have the confidence on that. Yeah. This is before and after. Yeah. yeah, they cheer up for the reborn of the city. And also, the hot meal. We have instant rice, the cooked instant rice for them. And again, blanket for them, and spread our gratitude to them. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to give. And uh, conduct free clinic too. Yeah. And
and they give them their houses uh, and also treasure. And we build the, the church for them. Because master believe that the, the belief is the center of the city. So the church has to be rebuilt. We spend a couple millions US to rebuild the church, the Catholic church. So that's the church you to learn from the suffering. Be aware of your own happiness through seeing the suffering of others. When you're helping them, you know oh, how fortunate I am to be a giver instead to be a recipient. So we had the gratitude to be a giver. So giving with the gratitude. Yeah, we are so fortunate to be a givers. It's a blessed to be able to contribute. This is in Jordan in Iran, in Jordan too. This is me. <laughs> when I was a little bit younger than this. Yeah. <laughs> Still got the black hair. Yeah. So with the gratitude, we create this cycle of love. We are going to transfer recipient into a giver. You will not always be a recipient. You can be a giver someday because you have Buddha nature too. So gratitude, respect, and love is the three fundamental philosophy of such a charity. So transform the recipient, become the giver. In South Africa, the Brother Pan organized a, a, a sewing class to teach the Aborig Aboriginal people, the Zulu member, to making clothes and they sell to the market. They can earn wages to support their family like this. So one visit to the other, organize a, a, a class over 600 villages, accommodate 25,000 Zulu women to join the program. Eventually they become a volunteer to buy rice with their own money to support the poor one in their own community. They do the community service. They are not rich, but they can give. They can contribute to the others. Is South Africa. Now we have uh, over 100,000 volunteers in South Africa. They take care of the AIDS patient. Yeah, this is an AIDS patient. And you see the lady, her name is Gladys. She's been devoted to Tsuji volunteers over nearly 20 years. They pray. They are all Christian, but they behave like a Buddhist. Yeah. It's a gratis. Become a Tsuji missionary. Become a Tsuji commissioner. Comply with the ten percent of Buddhist. And um, and and she said, when I was at the bottom, it was Tsuji who saved me. Master Zheng Yan has sent us these messengers. They, he, she said, we are doing God's work. Through Siji, we're even closer to our God. So Buddha and Zijir are all the same. And the core is the compassion and love. Actually, uh, this uh, uh, Kathleen, uh, she is the Protestant commissioner. She's a priest of Protestant church, and she become our commissioner. So as I told, that such is a philosophy across religion, culture, and different nationality. So you also fulfill the state of emptiness, no recipient, no giver, even no giving itself. So indeed, our volunteer practice and actualize Buddha teaching. The uncertainty of catastrophe also taught us the wisdom of management. I share with the Chairman Zhuang and also William, the Buddhism management could be another alternative for the Western style of management. I got a chance to deliver uh, a speech in, at Harvard University back to 2011, talking about how we cope with uncertainty. Because when something happened, catastrophe 
come, the location is uncertain. The scale of disaster is uncertain. The government efficiency is uncertain, especially in some you know, underdeveloped country. And the number of victims is uncertain. The damage is uncertain. The collapse of rescue team is uncertain. So many uncertain how we can cope with the, uh, the disasters from such a perspective. We don't plan. We don't use strategy. So Harvard Business School, Professor Lerner, we have learned each other from, uh, from 29, 2009 until now. We have a friendship for nearly eight years. And his conclusion is such is, uh, wisdom is not based on strategy not based on plan, because you cannot plan for disaster. Any strategy will be fail in cope with the uncertainty of disaster. So such is make commitment that become its conviction. Where there is catastrophe, there are such volunteers. So in the constant change world and the dedication of core values. So in this constant changing world, the only thing we can hold up is our core value. It's not plan, it's not strategy. That's his conclusion. This is Professor Lerner in the picture taken in 2011. I look younger than then now, huh? <laughs> oh, wait. Impermanent, right? <laughs> Nothing lasts forever. I was TV anchor for 15 years in Taiwan and then 15 years in Suji. So uh, yeah, I changed a lot. So this is I share with the um, student at Harvard Business School about the, uh, the ideal and the core value of Tsuji. And this is Leonard present his case study uh, last year in Tsuji Forum. And Professor Leonard believed that the business world have to learn from Tsuji's model. Because nowadays, social economic environment is changing rapidly. And plan a strategy, face dysfunction or failure. Yeah, will be. So he believed that we had to focus core value, like Tsuji. And the motivation is on daily operation is also important. Good motivation like mindful motivation, and treat your partner, your colleague, as a family member. So Tsuji not only uh, 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 commit to uh, support people who are suffered, we make the commitment, we also treat our member as a family. So love is key and inspiration for everyone to be devoted to the work in business, NGO, or government. And in such innovation, is not based on competition, it's based on love. Like this, uh, like a baby, you know, that's like flooding in Sri Lanka, uh, in, in Pakistan. We saw the young baby lying on the, on the floor. So Master Chen said, we have to create something for the victims. So here come the folding bed, multiple uh, uh, convertible folding bed. So the, the, the folding bed is not the creation of folding bed is not based on competition. We don't have any comp competitor, but based on love, because we have compassion on the baby lying on the cold winter floor. That's the compassion, create the innovation. So, so for the business uh, uh, field, we believe that competition create the innovation. For us, love and compassion generate innovation. So. We have the core value, giving with gratitude. Treat your member as a family. Innovation based on love. It's a three core value. And the, and the Harvard professor Lerner believed that um, the business in the field should learn from Tsuji. That's the 14 bed in Ecuador, in different, in Mozambique, in Haiti, in Philippines, in Taiwan. So, uh, uh, eventually, I, I want to share that the commitment of altruism is also the core philosophy of Tsuji. So where they are needy, there is our love and devotion. Business always create need to all people. It's equal. It's equal. 
equal to NGO, equal to Buddhist organization like us. And economy with the goodness. I think that's Professor Richard Penn's expertise on that. I'm going to share and learn from him later on. So eventually, hopefully, that love and compassion can, can ease our desire, transcend our desire, provide love to all sensual beings, eventually reach the ultimate enlightenment. Thank you so much.